Happy New Year, everybody. I know we're a little late, but I brought to you a person I think is going to be very interesting on this vlog, on this show. My own personal friend, the Bloodstain Lane. Bloodstain Lane, thank you for coming on the show. What's up? Thank you, Wayne. What's up, Chuck? How you guys doing today? Good. How you doing? <laughs> How was your New Year's? It was a, uh, just, a pretty, uh, pretty good New Year's, you know what I'm saying? Uh... Right now, I'm doing pretty good. It's fucking balls cold outside. Uh, I was at work today. I went to go take a piss. It was so fucking cold that I peed on my balls. Um, <laughs> and everything's good right now. I got my girlfriend. She's in the next room watching Columbiana. So I got time to do this video real quick. Then afterwards, she's getting piped down. So let's roll. Let's talk some MMA. Yeah, definitely. And of course, it's all brought to you by IronForgesIron.com, the best MMA website in the world. But uh, nonetheless, Zombie Prophet, what's up? Yes, shout out Zombie to Prophet. Zombie Prophet. Uh, UFC 141. This is uh, if you're an MMA fan, uh, New Year's Eve is the biggest night of the year. It was your night. It, it was your night. Fuck, the, fuck Times Square. Fuck the strip. Live that, stream or at the event. If you're an MMA fan, that's really all you need. I mean, it, it just it crazy, crazy, crazy. Loving the fact that it's on a Friday because Friday is usually my day where I'm doing nothing. You know, I don't mind uh, MMA fights being on Friday, so I was real happy about that. I'll tell you that. the truth, I'd like, to see more, I'd like to see more UFCs on Fridays. I, yeah. I kind of enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah I have no problem. Usually uh, Fridays are like the best days for me to do this stuff because usually everybody goes out drinking, they party on Saturdays, so, you know, it, it's the best thing. You know, usually sometimes you'll be, you'll be watching a UFC show looking at the time like, come on, man, I got to get I gotta get out of here. I got to get out of here sometimes yeah. on a Saturday night. So Friday, having an event on Friday was awesome. And I'm sure they're gonna have good numbers, so especially with Brock fighting. But we're gonna start off Nam fan versus Jimmy Headaches. Um, I feel like an idiot because um, when I was looking at this fight in the beginning, I didn't think I, I didn't really look into Headaches because I know you fought once in the UFC, you fought uh, Bruce Leroy, and I didn't think that you know that he was worth going into divulging, finding him out, out more information. I did eventually. And I feel like an idiot because I just kind of passed by this fight. I did think that Hedges was going to be a, uh, win this fight because by submission, I didn't think he was going to dominate Nam Fan. That that came as a complete surprise to me. But nonetheless, he wins by decision. Your thoughts, Bloodstain Lane? Uh, I'll be honest with you. I was never, never really high on Nam Fan as a fighter. I always thought he was a gutsy guy. <laughs> You know, he put on some decent performances at K1 Heroes over there, but I never was really high on him as a, you know, world-class fighter. The other kid, um, I never even really seen, this was the first time I seen the fight, and I yeah. didn't even watch this fight I live. Did. I watched it on a TiVo uh, the next day, and uh, the kid was very, very, very impressive in terms of he just kept on going, you know, with the striking, the red. He, he, he kind of reminded me of Ben Henderson a little bit in terms of just, like, just not stopping his just grinding every fucking minute of every round and he uh he schooled on uh, Nam Fan, you know? Chuck, Definitely. anything you wanna add? Uh, man, that like like what's saying this was my first time seeing Jimmy Hetty Jimmy Hetz or whatever however, however you say his name. Uh this kid had some sick fucking judo. Uh his judo looked better than Don than Stun Gun's judo. Yep. That night, and like, man, that fucking like you were like Bloodstain said, like the guy didn't stop even in the last round. He's just coming at you, even if it's slow. He's just throwing at you, and uh, Nam Fan just seemed to got he got overwhelmed. His cardio, and, uh, his cardio was, 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 was sick, it was sick, and, yeah, and like I said, it was, it was very, sick. very Ben Hend Ben Henderson like type performance. Yes. And like I said, Nam Fan, he's a, a good, you know, medi I would say he's a mediocre fighter. So let's see, he's you know, what the next guy. test. Is. But I was impressed. I, I, you know, yeah, was, but I was impressed. That's the way you got to make a statement like that. You know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. You just destroy guys. You know what's interesting? Also, I was going on Twitter. All the fighters were rooting for Jimmy Hedges. Everybody was was rooting for Jimmy Hedges. I don't. I don't know Probably if he's know. like uh, well loved in the, uh, between the fighters or whatever. But for some reason, Wait, everybody who was, was going for him. The fighters, fighters were going for him. Or yeah, man. Everybody on Twitter, Twitter, all the fighters that I have on Twitter, were all saying congratulations, congratulations. I think Hendo was one of them. A, a whole bunch of the fighters are just yeah. mentioning his, his name, so it was pretty. It was pretty interesting. I was like, oh man, this guy. Where did they train out of? Wait, wait, what gym did he train out of? No, no idea. No, I. I if if Chuck wants to check it out, I have no idea where exactly he um. Is he, he a Team Quest guy? I, I don't. Uh, 
Michigan, uh, uh, Jimmy Jackson's, uh, Greg Jackson's, yeah. Jackson's? Yeah. Yeah. Jimmy well, the guy, the guy, fin- the guy finishes fights. He finishes yeah, fights, yeah. man. He's a, uh, he's from Pennsylvania. He's twenty four, but he uh, he trains at Jackson's MMA. So, and uh, it's not all, it's not all Jackson's guys who are like that. But you can't say that it's not at least a good amount of them, and it doesn't happen sometimes in big in like a long period of time where it's just shitty fights, you know. But. uh a lot of the guys bring it, and he is definitely a guy to look forward to in the future. Yeah, yeah definitely. definitely. Sure. De- sure. Definitely. Uh, second fight, Vladimir Matyushenko versus Alexander Gustafsson. Uh, Another guy. You know what's interesting? I think uh, Matyushenko, I looked him up, and I was thinking about betting this fight like an idiot, and then Dono, so shout out to <laughs> Dono, my man. He saved me yeah. some money because I was thinking, you know, Matyushenko's oh, only lost once, I believe, since 09 in the UFC, and it's to John Jones. Just, just for the record, I, mean, I don't mean to cut yeah. you off. Dono is the modern day John Candy. So there it okay. is. <laughs> there it is. There it is. So <laughs> Uncle Buck. Really is. There it is. Uncle Buck. <laughs> So I mean, like, in the fuck. corner, have a rat chew that thing off your face. Classic scene. Classic scene. Oh, but I mean, uh, R.I.P. John Candy. Bro, R.I.P. John Candy. Everybody keeps on. Oh, no. <laughs> I love you, man. Come on. <laughs> Gustafson's like Candy, bro. I keep on hearing this analogy. Gustafson's the new John Jones. Apparently, everybody's going to be from no. now on. It seems like everybody's going to be the new John Jones, and then just like everybody was going to be the new Fedor. But uh, Gustafson was supposed to be the new John Jones. He definitely proved it as far as beating Matt Yushchenko in, in, in TKO round one. Uh, there's not much to talk about uh, except for the fact that 41 years old. I don't know if that's going to be considered uh, well, well, a John Jones like. Wait, uh, whatever. And Gustafson. Gustafson. I, in my in my vlog, I did. I said Gustafson is similar to John Jones, just in terms of physique. And the length yeah. of his arms and legs, his wingspan, he's a very tall, lanky guy like John Jones. You know, that's the only comparison in terms of skill set that can really, uh, you know, can make, you know, comparable to John Jones. I think Gustafson has a hell of a future, though. I think he's a, you know, a very, very good fighter. Um, but then again, you know, in that fight, Matt Yushchenko did kind of just run into that jab. You know what I'm saying? Or mm-hmm. whatever punch that was thrown. And, you know, he was, was kind like of like, step, you know. He's like, step yeah, back. yeah. So just a step back, back jab. And now he's just like, he's 41 years old. He is 41 years old. So I don't want to put too much emphasis into it. But uh, Gustafson definitely has a bright fucking future. But from what I'm hearing, I'm hearing that Gustafson next fights against Shogun in April. I think that's a little oh, bit too no. high of a, of a test for him right away. I, I don't, I really don't like it. He's going to get destroyed. Uh, He's gonna get destroyed if he fights. I think I, that's the. I, I'm sad to hear that. I'm really sad to hear that because I, I'm Norwegian. Gustafsson Swedish. Uh, all, the only guy I got is uh, Joachim Hansen from my country to rep my country and Ole Vinamo. You know what I'm saying? That's all I got. But they're Bushido as fuck, so I can respect that. Uh, Gustafsson looked really good, man. Uh, and like you got, like Wayne said, Maddie. Uh, he he only lost to a top guy who's who's now the champion. He was like four and one before this fight uh, in UFC, I believe, and just doing work. You know what I mean? He's an old vet who's still just fucking putting uh, young guys in their places. But Gustafson, uh, just he he looked real good. But he, like, looked, he uh, looked good. He looked good. But I think the matchmaking for him, to, for them, for, for the UFC to pair him up with Shogun this early on. I don't think it's a good step. I think Shogun is still no, an elite level. Definitely not. You know, I, in my opinion, I I, I don't yeah. want to go back. You know, the to the you know UFC 139. I still feel like Shogun handle should have been a draw. That's my opinion. So Shogun is so, still yeah. an elite level light like, heavyweight. Gustafson should yeah. you know maybe get somebody like Ryan Bader as his next fight than a guy like Shogun. In my opinion. Yeah, well, we'll, we'll see, only time definitely. will tell. I mean, we really the the the, the 205 division is so stacked. I don't know why they're rushing this guy. It's a stacked. Yeah, well, I don't have no idea why they're trying to ru- rush Gustafson. But uh, nonetheless, that fight's over. We got the third fight real quick. Real, real quick, man. John Fitch versus Johnny Hendricks. KO. First round. 
Probably the most let's, entertaining. Let's, let's, let Chuck start him off first. Yeah, the most entertaining, fr- definitely the most entertaining John Fitch fight I've ever seen in my life. Ever. Thank, <laughs> yeah. thank fucking God. Thank, thank God. God. Listen, this was so long. This was such a long time coming. And I still, to be honest with you, I have not seen this fight yet. I have wow. not seen this fight. I fucking went outside to smoke a cigarette for one fucking second while they came out. The cigarette was, I, I took an extra second, and I came in, and there, my friends were just fucking jaws to the floor, and just so happy, and, uh, man, I really need to see this fight, but, uh, 12 seconds, I don't even give a fuck, honest, I don't need to see it, I just need to know John Fitch got knocked down in 12 seconds, uh, he can't bitch about fucking getting a title shot anymore, really, uh, well, what, what are you John gonna do, Fitch, you know? John Fitch- John Fitch is never going to get a title shot ever again. Never. Ever. Never. First of all, the guy, the guy has won how many fights since the loss to GSP, right? And now he yeah. lost. You know, you know Dana White and the rest of those guys ain't, ain't fans of him. He's all the no, way in the back no. of that line. He'll have to win He'll have to win 20 straight fights and probably fucking tap out Pope fucking Benedict, whatever Pope <laughs> name we have. I don't, even know the, I don't even know the fucking Popes that we have now. Pope John Paul, yeah. he's still alive. He's going to have to beat one of so those fucking shit. guys to get a title shot, you know? Definitely, definitely. What do you think, Wayne? Bro, the, the, I was so shocked by this. So very shocked, man. You know what's interesting? Both guys are really good wrestlers, and we know that it, it was going to cause Fitch to, to stand up a little bit more. But I really didn't. I thought Fitch was going to grind out another decision. I think everybody thought this. A, a complete shock. <coughs> complete, complete shock. That's, this came out of nowhere. That's this why came I out went of nowhere. to smoke a cigarette. That's exactly why I went to go smoke a cigarette. You know what I'm saying? Every UFC card for me has one fight where I'm like, that's where I go and get fucking faded or do whatever I'm going to do. You and, know it's, what I'm and it's that's every my... John Fitch fight. It's every yeah, John every Fitch John fight. every John Fitch card. That's why they have that. That's like the intermission in, for Japan. But for Japan, all the fights are so good, they don't need that shit. Yeah. When, it, uh, when fucking John Fitch fights, I fucking take his shit. I go jerk off. I go do what I got to do real quick and then come back for the next fight. Because you know, I know yeah. I'm going to have 15 minutes to spare every fucking fight. Yeah. Always. You know? Always. It's like it's it's like a it's a for sure thing. It's a for sure thing. Crazy. But uh, I honestly, I, I really, I really do feel like that's actually kind of the best thing to happen to that division because now it opens up, you know, new contenders that you know come up and and, and challenge for the title. And uh, you know, because John Fitch is like, you know, listen, I don't want to shit on the guy. The guy is good at what he does. He he knows how to win fights. He's not fun to watch. He's you know, he, he, but he wins. So I don't want to shit on him. He yeah. does what he what he does. I don't like watching him fight. I'm kind of glad this kind of happened, so I don't have to see John Fitch consistently. You know, he'll he'll get to the title, lose it, and then win six, seven more fights, get another title shot. I'm just glad yeah. that you know he's all the way at the bottom of the fucking barrel again. You know, you know what's interesting. Yeah, Every yeah. time you, you always hear his name mentioned, title it's always he's always one or two fights away from being a title contender. You know, and then and you always cringe. Yeah. You always cringe like God. I have no idea. I, I have no desire to watch this guy fight for the title. You know, and I was saying, I'm saying to myself, God, I really thought the next fight would have been a title shot. After this, uh, you know, or I was said, God, they must have. I was thinking definitely, to myself, definitely. they have to have a good I mean, undercard. You would almost had to just give it to him. You would have just. Nah, had they to were gonna, give they it were to gonna give him. They were gonna give him the. Uh, they were gonna give him the Okami treatment, bro. He had to win at least yeah. 12, 13 fights for another title. Trust me, they did not want it's John like, Fitch getting another title shot. They did not want him getting yeah. a title shot. So know? nobody wants, and I don't think a lot of people want to see that, though. Anyways, so it's a good thing that they were play, that this played out just how it went because now. It's great for good for UFC and good for fans, I guess. Yeah, uh, and now wait, is uh, John Hendrix, Fitch because what? hopefully, hopefully John Fitch comes back, fucking uh, fire and new fighter, man. Hopefully, get knocked the fuck out, made him realize like oh, he had an epiphany or something. I hope so. I, I think now, it's. Gonna, I hope he just like comes out every time. I think he's. Something. It's going to cause him to 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 lay and pray more. I think. I, I think this. He, I, I don't, don't think he's going to want to take a sh- another it shot. Could go, I don't know. I. I'm I'm excited to see what happens. Definitely, uh, you can't you but, can't uh, you can't teach an old dog new tricks anyway. He's just gonna go back to you know being yeah. a blanket. He knows it's he knows how to win. You know what I'm saying? He knows how to win. So it is what it is. You know. Yeah. Now, but what's yeah, next? Yeah. But what's next for Johnny Hendricks? Wow, it's it's so you know what I need. Nobody's ever really. I wouldn't thought. give him a top guy. I wouldn't I wouldn't give him a top guy right yet. I think this fight was more for. Uh, John Fitch to, to just lay and pray and, and 
you know, have his way with Johnny Hendricks. I don't think a lot of people thought that Johnny Hendricks I'd say, I'd say he gets the winner of um, Ellenberger and Diego Sanchez. That low? Okay. No. I can respect that. Koscheck? I can respect that. Maybe Koscheck? I don't know, because Ellenberger is a pretty tough, he's a, he's a top contender right now. You know, I, I don't like Ellenberger at all, but he, he he's on a winning streak, and, and he's, off, you know. Uh, Jake Shields win? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He knocked out yeah, Jake yeah, Shields yeah, yeah, yeah. quick. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, so. I'm just not quite, I, I would have to definitely reassess uh, Johnny Hendricks, you know what I mean? Because I'm not quite sure if he's ready for the top. Five, I would say, of the division, but uh, yeah. he looked amazing. And, and he you, did whatever. I'll tell wanted. you one thing: uh, to keep the well, hype, the hype train going, they're going to put him in a fight real quick, real, real quick. You know, mm-hmm. just so people remember who he is, because his name is not mentioned a lot. No, yeah. not at all. Uh, we'll be thinking about it. That, that division kind of thinned out a little bit. You know what I'm saying? It's not as strong as it, as it used to be. Koscheck's really not. Nobody. Koscheck's never going to be a champion. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Uh, after Nick Diaz versus Condit. There's really not that many interesting fighters because you know after, Nick Diaz is going to be conned. I don't give a fuck what anybody says. After Definitely. Nick beats Condit, you know, fight GSP, and whoever wins that fight, I mean, who do you have in that division? Really, you have BJ Penn. I'm not interested in seeing BJ ever fight for a title again. You, you got the no, shit no, kicked no, out no. of my Nick. You got Koscheck. I don't care about. Listens. He never comes that, with the game plan. His corner's just saying, "Go knock him out, bro." Like I'm that's telling, not a fucking really, game plan. And if, you division, if you look at the welterweight division, if you look at the welterweight division, the only guys that are really out there, you know, besides Koscheck, Fitch, and all the guys who've been lingering around for the last fucking five years, is Ellenberger and fucking Johnny Hendricks. Really, and Andy yeah. Johnson dropped down to 185. Martin Campman's is not really a top product. I mean, you got Rory McDonald and guys like that, but you know, they're, that they're division not, really, they're... really thinned out. You know, maybe yeah. maybe somebody like C.R. Baja does auto step up. I don't know. I uh, you know. I hope so. I think the guy. I think the guy that the UFC should really, really try to throw a lot of money after uh, whatever when his contract is over is Ben Askren. That's what they should try to go after. I agree. I think he's going to be a champion one day. I agree. I agree. Definitely. But <sighs> next fight, Nate Diaz versus Donald Cerrone, bro. Just okay. a great, beautiful fight, man. That's a brawl. When I say beautiful, I mean that these guys went toe to toe. Um, you know, this you, you may not like Diaz, you might not like the Diaz brothers, but you have to respect the, their chins. You have to respect the fact that they're game. They and and Diaz, what Diaz did was he went after Cerrone by smothering him. That cardio is just such a great, you know. You talk about there's certain fighters that have great assets. Uh, you know, John Jones with the reach. Uh, D, the, both the Diaz brothers, their biggest biggest attribute is their cardio. I mean, they, they they press forward, they bring the fight to you. They don't care about your strengths, your weakness, or anything. They, if you want to brawl with them, they're gonna brawl. If you want to take it to the mat, they're gonna take it to the mat. Uh, just an amazing fight. Just an amazing fight. And uh, I think Cerrone. Uh, didn't I don't think he gave Diaz that much respect going into it coming out. You bet you bet your ass that he definitely respected the hell out of Diaz. Uh, anything you want to add to that? <coughs> Let's say I'll let uh, I'll let I'll let Chuck touch it first. Nate Diaz <coughs> probably some of the most exciting boxing that I've seen in a long time in the UFC. He trained with Andre Ward, or am I mistaken? No, you did. He trailed yeah. one. Yeah, yeah. Fuck, man. Coming off the Gomi win and this win, th- th- he's going to be a champion at one, 155 or 145. I know he will, definitely. Or even if 170 if he wanted to. I don't think he can make 145. I'm tripping. Uh, just annihilation, man. Annihilation landed 81% of his strikes. And there's... There's just not much you can say about it besides there's one of the best fights you, you can ever watch, and that's like the fight that gets the fans, really. You know what I mean? Donald Cerrone, he came with a good game plan, those leg kicks, but he was afraid to jump on into Nate's guard because he knew he would have got subbed out, which I was saying in the in our previous vlog. I figured I thought he would get subbed out, and he wouldn't go into 
he wouldn't even uh, try to fuck with Nate Diaz's guard because he knows. Uh, so those leg kicks aren't really, they don't really matter if you're not going to jump in his guard. You know what I mean? You're just kicking him. He's falling down. You're letting him get back up. It's like whatever. It does, it's, doesn't matter. And uh, three rounds isn't long enough to just, you know, beat him with leg kicks. And you're not, you're not putting together any combinations. Uh, Nate Diaz is just brilliant, man. Just brilliant. Uh, couldn't hope for a better fight, and I'm so happy he won. What do you think? I think, uh, honestly, I, I really... Okay, going back to the Gomi fight, I, I didn't want to put too much emphasis in that win because, let's be real, Gomi is nowhere near the fight he used to be no more. He's not motivated. He doesn't look like he wants to fight no more. So I didn't want to put too much emphasis, even though Nate looked incredible in that fight. Beating Takanori Gomi of, you know, 2011 and 2012 doesn't really mean shit to me no more. But in this fucking fight, he really showed, like, you know, because Nick, let's go back to his brother. His brother was always a good fighter, but he didn't become an elite fighter to, like, oh, wait, he didn't really hit his stride yet. You know, but, you yeah. know, that's what Nate Diaz, I think, is starting to hit right now. He's starting to hit his stride. He knows what kind of fighter he is. He, un he knows all his talents and all his abilities. Because if you know that, if you watch Nate Diaz from three, four fights ago and watch him now, his punches are a lot more sharper, a lot more accurate. You know, he's more aware, his distance is a lot better, you know, and I think he's really, really hitting his stride into becoming an elite MMA fighter. I really think that, you know, I, I think he's, I think right now he is an elite MMA fighter. And I think that uh, Cowboy, you know, he came out running at the Nate and, uh, you know, yeah, he wanted to impose his will on him. And I think he, whatever little skirmish he got into in that early on, he felt it. And uh, after yeah. that, he was never the same again. After that, after he rushed him, he had his head movement was not non-existent. He was like a fucking corpse, just standing there. And everything Nate Nate's punch percentage must have been at least seventy percent. I don't know the stats, but it was almost everything was landing. Eighty-one percent. It was eighty-one percent. It was a record. Huh. How sick is that? How sick is that? <laughs> it's, like, it's I, like, crazy. I, like I said in my vlog, I know fucking people who are fucking handicapped. From the fucking power line, from the weight, from the neck down, that had more head movement than fucking uh, than cowgirl. Yeah. But it, it's like it, it's fucking. It just it just really, really, really. That was an outstanding, picture perfect performance by Nate Diaz. And like I said, I think he's on the right track to becoming, um, you know, the uh, UFC lightweight champ. I think he will. It's going to be tough. Um, who is Frankie fighting next? He's fighting. Um, ben Henderson. Ben Henderson. Oh wow! See, uh, not nice. in Japan. See, see, uh, Ben Henderson is a tough matchup for anybody. Just because you're just a yeah. fucking nut job, who just doesn't stop. But I feel like <laughs> Nate. I, I feel like Nate. He's such a resilient, tough guy, just like his brother. That they will find ways to win, specifically in a five round fight. You know what I'm saying? A three oh, round yeah. fight. You know, you could be held to win. Exactly. So I think that Under Nate. I think he has a good chance of becoming UFC lightweight champion. I feel like he should be next up after, you know, he should be the next guy in line for that, for that, uh, for that title. And, uh, who knows what's gonna happen? Because, you know, Gilbert Melendez is probably gonna be making his way over soon. So, you know, Gil and Nate are probably not gonna fight each other. So, uh, we'll see what happens, you know? But, um, definitely Nate Diaz has hit his fucking stride. And it's, it's really fun to watch because, you know, like I said, his brother hit his stride three years ago and now Nate's starting to hit it. The, 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 yeah, the I believe that and that's a great that's a great analysis. The combinations yeah, the so combinations the combinations that this guy throws is just head, head, yeah, body, yeah, body, yeah. head, head, Beautiful body. Boxing. I mean he, just amazing. He hits you from different angles, he hits you from you know, all over the place. It's just amazing how man, I, I think more guys should look into being triathletes. You know what I'm saying? Like it, it definitely, yeah, definitely. I mean, they have cardio for days. And not to mention, not to mention, they are legit tough guys. It's not an act. It's not bullshit. No. They're legit tough guys. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. Um, definitely. Now we go. And I'm nicest, gonna... <laughs> two of the nicest motherfuckers ever. Two of the yeah, nicest guys. They really ever. are. Two of the nicest really guys are. ever. And people who talk shit on them man, have never met him. Because if you meet him, you know what I'm saying? I met him, I met him two times. And got signatures. Cool as fuck. So nice. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Specific, 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 specifically, Nate. specifically Nate. Specifically yeah, Nate Diaz. Nate. The nicest <laughs> I've ever met in, in the industry. Yeah. Nick's a nice guy, but he's a little socially awkward. He's yeah, he just doesn't like nice that guy. situation, and that's what people don't understand about yeah. it. 
people find that so strange, but some people just don't fucking like all that interaction with humans. You know what I'm saying? And there's nothing wrong with that. Leave the guy alone. Simple as that. Yeah, and just, uh, like I said, big up to Nick Diaz. He, he's fucking, he watches my videos, so big up to him. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, get that title. Hopefully that he sees title. this. Hopefully, he's gonna get it. Hopefully he sees this on ironforgedesign.com or whatever website. He looks at it and... and we love you, Diaz. We, we love the Diaz brothers. Okay. We'll get, I'll get him to see you. Yeah, All definitely. Day. Definitely. That would be All an day. honor. Um, so we go down to the main event. And it's interesting. And I'm glad that Blood Saline is here with me. We had a conversation in February. I hope I'm not giving up a lot here. Because I mentioned it on the vlog. February, we met the Reem. We had dinner with him. We just, You asked him about Brock Lesnar. And there was a rumor that Brock was going to be trading in Golden Glory. Um, and he said, no, it's not true. And, 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 and Reem said, listen, and then you asked him, would you be willing to, to trade him? And he says, as long as, it, as, long as he's serious about it, um, you know, I, I'd be willing to trade with anybody, you know, and I'm just not going to half-ass the training. Because that was the rumors that Pat Barry was half-assing the training. Um, so... For me personally, two of my favorite heavyweight fighters. I respect the hell out of Fedor, not my favorite fighter. You know, apples and oranges. <clears throat> so I came real, real close to thinking about this fight. I picked Freem to win this fight. I knew he was going to knock him out in the first round. I was, I was rooting for Lesnar because I thought he had more to lose in this fight. Uh, I had dinner with Reem, nicest guy in the world. Anthony knows that, right? Bloodstain, just like the, the coolest person in the world. I felt like Judas. I felt like Judas rooting for for Brock, but I wanted to see what would happen if, if Brock. Oh, actually, I, I, I approached you on I, I, I approached you on Twitter too about it, <laughs> and that made me even feel worse. Oh, um, wow. And then that's where the whole that's where the whole Judas thing came in because he's like, oh, you broke bread with it. I'm like, oh yeah, yeah. We had a big dinner with a whole bunch of people there. Here I am, <laughs> rooting against him, you know. <laughs> but he turns his back. So I'm saying, oh my god, man. Oh my god, you know. And then with another thing that I did was I um I recorded um the fan reaction for the Reem. Hopefully that'll show up on his his next episode. <laughs> um, uh, Reem beat him. A liver kick. He's obviously done. Here's what pisses me off about this. It's not the fact that he lost. Losing to the Reem is not something you'd be shameful about. The fact that he came back from this disease and he's fighting is not something to be shameful about. Uh, the fact that, look, man, he's fought title contender after title contender. I mean, you know, he's, he's fought the top guys in the UFC. Um, I feel like such a fool, man. I, I really do feel like a fool now that he retired. Because for years, for years I've been defending Brock Lesnar. For years I've been defending this man to my <laughs> friends. I'm, 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 I'm serious. For years I've been defending this man. Uh, you know, uh, that, 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 that he was serious about this. My friend Richie's for, for, for years has been saying Brock's going to be done. Once he loses, he's done. Every fight's going to be, his, you know, he says he's going to be fighting six times. And then after that, he said he's done. Um, and then after that, he'll go to the WWE and make a, a big paycheck. I never believed him. I, I just, I never paid any mind to it. I denied it, denied, denied it. Uh, uh. You know, and I hate to use this analogy for me. I'm talking a lot of personal, you know, personal. I, I've done things physically uh, with, with football where I, I, two years ago, I picked up playing uh, contact football with pads and everything. Hardest thing I've ever done in my life, but not once. And I, I got my ass knocked millions of times, especially since, uh, you know, I'm, I'm one of the lighter guys, although I'm fat. It does, uh, you know, I'm lighter for a lineman and, you know, I'm inexperienced. There's a lot of things that goes on in football when you get knocked down. Every time I got knocked down, and I got put in my ass a lot, okay? Not once did I say, man, this is, I, I, what am I, I, I got to quit this. I got to quit this. When you're fr faced with adversity, you know, you don't say, I quit. You know, you don't retreat. And the name, the word retreat and Brock Lesnar come up a lot. Uh, uh, you don't retreat. You, you have to have the heart to, to come back and say, hey, okay, 
I, I lost two, but I could still come back. I have faith in my skills and my my passion for this sport it makes me want to fight. The fact that he, the fact that he quit this sport is just turned me off to, to to watching this guy on TV, hearing anything about him. I was upset for two days straight because I felt like an idiot just rooting for this guy. I, I, I didn't believe that he was... I'm not the type of person going, yo, he's the greatest fighter in the world. And, uh, he, he could beat Fedor. I, I never thought that. Uh, um, but the fact that he quit just shows that he's he's got to be the biggest pussy in MMA. And I don't... I don't he, he's the biggest pussy in MMA. I mean, you, 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 can't, you can't quit. I, I just, I, it just doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't, I give him respect for coming back from the disease. I give him res- respect for, for fighting uh, for that little amount of training time. But you you just don't quit. You don't half-ass something, especially when you have people supporting you. I, I, I just, I don't know. I mean, I'm very upset, very, very upset that Lesnar is no longer going to be in this sport. I hope that he doesn't go to the WWE because um, then it would show a lot of people, his haters. Because I think he took a lot of unnecessary hate. But on, on this, I can't defend Lesnar on, on this. I really can't defend Lesnar on this. I am so shocked, man. I give him respect for going out there. He's tougher than me to go out there and fight. But the fact that he quit is just appalling to me. And I'm done. I, I, I'm, I'm glad that Reem wins. One, I've always been a fan of the Reem. Uh, Alistar, if you're listening to this, I'm very, very, from the bottom of my heart, uh, apologetic for not rooting for you for this fight. But I, I went with the underdog here, and I thought Lesnar was the underdog. I wanted to see people flip out from seeing this fight if you did lose. And I thought that you had, um, it, it, Brock had more to lose in this fight. But, but man, uh, nonetheless, Overeem's going to be world heavyweight champion this year, guaranteed. There's no, there's nobody out there that's going to stop him. And, and, that's it. I'm done. Blood stay lane. <laughs> uh, um, I, you, you were harder on Brock Lesnar than I was. Holy shit. Um, okay, uh, listen. I'm not going to I'm not gonna defend Brock Lesnar here. Maybe I am. But I, I think... Yeah, I, I honestly feel like all those illnesses caught up to him, man. I don't think... And I think he knows that. Maybe he bitched out of, of wanting to fight again, but I really, really think that he knows, I don't think he can be able to continue and fight the way he wants to fight with all these fucking illnesses that are life, life-threatening, you know, illnesses, so I, I think that's the reason why he quit. Did he bitch out? I, listen, I, I've always said Brock Lesnar, I always called him the white Bob Sapp. And anybody that knows Bob Sapp, exactly. anybody that watched JMMA and years, everybody knows Bob Sapp didn't really have a lot of heart. Every time he got hit, I mean, Jerome Labana made Bob Sapp cry. Mirko Krokop made him fucking cry. Right. Made him cry. Made him cry. Um, you ever see Bob Sapp when he gets hit, he goes, turns around, and he spins around. You see it in yeah. K1, right? Yeah. What does Brock Lesnar do when he gets hit? He turns around and he spins runs and runs away sex. and he doesn't like contact. See, there's a difference between being a fighter and an athlete. Brock is a great, great athlete, but he's not a fighter. He doesn't have a fighter's heart. He, he, he relied on an intimidation, strength, and raw, just raw power. He was never really, I never really considered him a fighter. Was he fun to watch? Fuck yeah. Anybody, a big fucking 400-pound Viking like that stepping in a cage? I want to see that shit. You know what I'm saying? But was he a fighter? Did he have a fighter's heart? Absolutely fucking not. Yes? Listen, I'll give the guy fucking credit. He came into the UFC with no sort of MMA experience, and he, and he won the title. I mean, he beat Frank Mir, who I'm not really high on, even though Frank Mir continues to beat up guys I fucking love. Makes me sick to my stomach. But he beat Frank Mir. Uh, he got through that Shane Carwin beatdown. And, uh, you, know, he, he, he was, you know, he was doing good for himself. But even through all that, I never really felt Brock Lesnar was a fighter. I always felt he was more of, a, a, of an attraction. More of an attraction than an actual fighter. And like I said, he gets props to beating Frank Mia. He gets props to beating Heath Herring. You know, he gets props to beating those guys. But when it comes down to the nitty-gritty, that size and strength would only get you so far against highly, highly skilled fighters. You know, Shane Conway, he's, he's not... I don't consider him a highly skilled fighter. Just a guy with tremendous punching power and decent wrestling. Not really the most highly skilled guy. You're talking about Alistair Overeem now. You're talking about... 
one of the top stand-up fighters in the fucking planet, bro. Not to mention the guy's 265 fucking pounds. I mean, this guy's won championships in MMA, K1. He can grapple. He won, what, 2006 European Abu Dhabi? He's a highly skilled fighter. Cain Velasquez, look at his wrestling credentials. Look where he trains at. The guy, the level. He's a highly skilled guy. Brock is not, cannot compete with guys of that magnitude, of that skill. Um... I, I don't want to trash him like I did in my in, in my video. I, I think I, I think I did that enough. But like I said, I never felt like he was a fighter. I always felt like he was more of an attraction, more of an athlete. And um, it's kind of the end of an era in terms of you know they you know that WWF wrestler coming in and and, and, and making noise. It's the end of an era. And um, I don't hate the guy. I, I, I gave the guy respect for even stepping in the cage and and, and fighting. But I think it's actually the best move he did was quitting, man. Because I really don't feel like he compete. With those level guys of uh, Overeem, Dos Santos would have creamed him. Um, yeah. I, I I think Fedor would have embarrassed him, in my opinion. Embarrassed. Even though, even even with the size difference, just stylistically, yeah. it's a horrible matchup for Brock. Because you know, once Fedor yeah. starts throwing those fucking punches, the way he throws yeah. them, Brock will start spinning around at the fucking ballerina shit he always does, and it'll be a wrap. So. You know, it was, uh, <laughs> like I said, it was it was fun while it lasted. Like I said, even though I wasn't really this big a fan, I enjoyed watching him in the cage because, like I said, it's always fun to see a big fucking monster like that fighting. As for Alex Overeem, I mean, he blew me away with his performance just based on the fact that all the shit that was going on, the Golden Glory beef, the switching of camps, the mother having cancer, it was just so much shit going on, and the guy came and he looked really, really fucking good, and... He utilized his game plan, getting, cl getting close with the fucking knees, batting that rib cage, and, and that's how he beat him. And I really, really do not feel... I mean, listen, anybody can be, be in this sport. You know, I still kind of question Reem's chin, you know, in a way. Cause, and especially with Dos Santos, he has heavy, heavy hands. But I really feel like this title is, is Reem's to, to, to take, and I think he's going to get it. I think he's going to be the UFC heavyweight champion. And, um, I mean, you really got to start considering this guy as one of the best fighters of all time, period. I mean, I mean, a guy is winning championships in MMA at the highest level and winning championships in kickboxing at the highest level. How can you not say he's one of the greatest fucking fighters? It's just incredible. So, um, I can't wait for the Dos Santos fight. I think, um, Overeem is a better fighter than Dos Santos. I think he's more, you know, his striking's more well-rounded. Um, I think he's stronger than Dos Santos. Um... The only thing I question is him getting clipped on the chin by one of those Los Santos punches, but if you can weather that, getting close with them knees, batter him in, I think he'll be the UFC champion. Chuck, what do you think? Uh, I'm not going to be too hard on Brock Lesnar. I'd say he's the American equivalent to the Japanese freak show fight. Uh, I feel a little bit bad for him that uh, he retired because like, I, I, I feel like he maybe he there was something wrong with him. There's something that we don't know. Uh, but uh, we'll, I'm sure we'll find out soon if that's the case. He just didn't have... He, he's just a one-dimensional guy, man. And that's just the end of the hype train that UFC tried to push on us and casual fans for the longest time of Brock Lesnar being the baddest man on the planet. All you need to beat Brock Lesnar is basic uh, punches and enough speed. And you got him, really. And, and strength to defend if he shoots him for a takedown. Or at least the wrestling credentials to defend or get away, you know what I mean? But, uh, man, he got destroyed. He just got destroyed. I don't know why he didn't uh, have a little more urgency trying to get Reem down on the ground. It seemed like he didn't really shoot him for too many takedowns. Uh, almost seemed like he was, like, okay to stand with him. I don't understand it. I really don't understand it. Uh, but he, those knees that he ate in the, in the, in the first few exchanges were fucking brutal knees. Uh, and the one hit that hit him right in the rib, it didn't finish him. Uh, but that shit would have finished almost anybody, man. So I give him props on that. And it, like Wayne said, you said it was a liver kick that ended up finishing him. Uh, just legit, man. Anybody who, who thought, uh, Brock Lesnar was going to, like, destroy Reem. I just don't know. I don't know what you guys are thinking. I really don't. It's like, you know, he's the, he's the K1 champion, Strike Force champion, uh, like like you say, Abu Dhabi champ. Uh, Dream champ. Dream champ. Everything. Everything that is, like, involved with 
combat sports, he has participated in at the highest level and succeeded. So people need to really stop doubting the Reem. Like, like what Saint Lane said, I, I agree with you completely with the JDS Reem assessment. Uh, Quinn, is, his chin is a little bit questionable, and uh, JDS is a hard fucking puncher. I think a little bit better boxing than uh, Reem, but Reem has definitely got the better kickboxing. Uh, Reem wins that fight. I think Reem has more ways to win that fight. Uh, Reem's got good submissions, like 18 wins by submissions. People sleep. He's the K1 champion, and he's got 18 goddamn wins by submission. You know what I'm saying? It's just crazy. Uh, Reem will be the K1 champ, or will be the UFC champion, and he will add it to all of his other belts, and uh, he will probably be champion for a long time, long time. But they definitely need to get the Strike Force guys over into the UFC: Cormier, Barnett, Bigfoot, all those guys, because the UFC heavyweight division is fucking shit. It is shit. There's like four guys that I. I can really sit here and tell you that, oh, these guys have a chance to win a title. You know what I'm saying? It's just not It's not good. Get Fedor there. Uh, settle shit with M1. Do what the fuck you have to do. Get Fedor there. Get Barnett, Cormier, everyone, and let's just do it. Yeah, just, yeah seriously, it has, to, it has to stop already with, uh, you know, we'll get into the Fedor thing, I guess, later, but they really need to start bringing the rest. Because it's, it's, right now, it's, it's a, all you really have there is Reem. Dos Santos and Kane, and uh, I'm sorry to say yeah. Frank Mir will get fucking washed oh, yeah, up by both yeah. three of those not, guys. He's not in that. He's not in that. He's not in there, and uh, I tell you, I would just love to see Frank Mir get the shit kicked out of him by Overeem, <laughs> just for kicks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't stand Definitely. that motherfucker. But um, uh, like I said, you, you bring a guy like Josh Barnett, you can say what you want about Josh. That guy, he's such, he's, he's so, so skilled at his craft. He's such and a master he technician. Exactly. When he did the hair a ton of. Come on, just the beast with the grappling. He perfected it. He perfected yeah. catch wrestling. He perfected his craft. Yeah, Daniel Cormier is just like I said. You know, I don't know. It's very popular to say, but he does kind of remind me of a, a new kind of Fedor. And just turn yeah. the, the stockiness and the short and, and the way he throws his punches. Uh, he reminds me of Fedor in a way. Um, so you got some interesting guys over in Strike Force that you can bring over. You know, even I know they bring brought Verdum over, but Verdum's always a, a dangerous opponent. Um, yeah. But you need to bring in specifically Fedor, Josh Barnett, and Cormier, and then you have yourself a nice heavyweight division with fun, ma fun yeah. matchups. These guys need to stop fucking around and, and, and make these fights happen. Definitely, and that's that, really. Yeah, I mean, uh, just one more thing, uh, a couple things to month. Brock looked like he was terrified going into that. i never seen him play off to the crowd. Usually he just runs, you know, he walks... In and you know he goes into the zone and or whatever. The only time he acknowledges the crowd is when they announce his name. Aside from that, he usually goes in and he, he's ready for war. Uh, this time he just looked like he was shook the whole time. I'm surprised he took this fight n number one. <laughs> Another thing because I give him props for taking this fight. I think he's stupid for taking it because you, you, your biggest problem is taking uh, punches or, or just strikes to the head, <laughs> and apparently. He he decided to fight the guy who who had the, the the best probability of knocking him out. Just doesn't make sense. But uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know. Maybe I'm just taking it a little too personally because yeah, I'm they, passionate. You know funny I, I'm passionate about the sport. I'm passionate about the sport, and I'm. A, a, I know you are. And when, I know you are. When, when you when you root for guys, I, I get down when they lose. But the fact that he, I didn't get down about this because I expected him to lose. The fact that he quit, man, oh, my God. It's just, it just it just proves it a lot is, of those people. Because there was a lot of hate. This guy got a lot of hate for being Brock Lesnar, you know. He didn't get, a lot of people gave him no respect. Oh, he, he fought cans. He fought a, 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 a lightweight, uh, a Randy, light, heavyweight Randy Couture and all this other stuff. But the fact that he quit, I don't know, man, but. Uh, it's you know, one more thing, it's fucking Alistair Overy, man. He's just cool as ice. He's just so calm and collective in there. Like, I know people, somebody said on Twitter that he'd be intimidated by Brock Lesnar. Bro, Alistair Overy fought Bada fucking Harry, the real yeah. baddest man on the fucking planet. And he was fine. He fought him twice, okay? So please, if you're not scared of Bada Harry, he's not going to be scared of Brock Lesnar. Mind you, he's fighting Bada Harry and Bada Harry's own fucking rules in that first uh, fight at Dynamite 08. So come on. That's as scary as you can get, you know? And, and, he, and he went in there and he knocked out Potter in, in, in one round, you know? So, 
There was no way Reem was going to be scared of Brock Lesnar. Crazy. Definitely not. So, we went like 45 minutes with this. I guess we could kind of go through the dream card real quick. I didn't see most of it. I mean, aside for... We'll get into the Fedor fight. Aside for the Fedor fight, you guys want to talk about anything as far as... I was surprised at Tokoro for... Um, uh, Tokoro lost against Sadaleya, correct, right? Uh, Tokoro got knocked out by a slam. Yeah, uh, he, 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 he came in, he walked... Belly, 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 belly to back suplex. It was amazing. It yeah, looked like a wrestling show. arm trapped... Picked up, boom, Bro, and it was spine over. buster. It was amazing. It was amazing. He, he, he walked right into a spine buster, got knocked out by a German suplex. It was pretty crazy. But you know what? That's what you, that's what you get with Tokoro. Tokoro, every time that guy fights, it's something fight. crazy happens. He's he's that's why he's loved in Japan. It's just he's fucking a go yeah. for broke type of fighter, but specifically with the submissions. Uh, he got caught. You know, it, it was a freak move, and he got caught. Oh. He got knocked out. Oh, um, got dropped on the side of his head. A lot of people get knocked out that way. You know what I'm saying? Uh, exactly. Uh, we got we got to talk about the Masaaki Nori, Kengo Sonata fight. I gotta Beautiful say, fight. The, the, one of the most exciting fucking kickboxers. If you don't know who Masaaki Nori is, you need to go look him up right now. He beat both the Yurabi brothers. He beat uh, uh, so many people, man. He lost. What he lost to? He beat uh, Fujiwara. The the crush champion. He only lost to Yuta Kubo really last year in the tur- in the in the in the sixty three kilogram tournament. You know what I'm saying? The kid is a monster. He's fucking that 18. fucking um that's that that switch right? that that switch spinning roundhouse kick he hit him with. I think it was in the second of their. Oh my god, bro! So something out of a in movie the, in the in the Yuta Kubo fight. Yes. Yes. Something out of a movie. Fucking crazy. So crazy. He's like. The guy is the kid is just like I, I dare say he he if he keeps on this track and just keeps destroying people like he destroyed Koya Yurabi, uh he's he's gonna be the champion for a long time and he's just gonna keep I stacking agree. those. He's the Koshian champion, he's the crush sixty three kilogram uh uh Nova champion. Just stacking belts. If people right? if people are missing out on some uh, on good uh you know uh, on some good combat you know, kick kickboxing in general in Japan, man. I got all the crush yes. DVDs. I watch them all the time. You know, it's always okay. they always put on fun, entertaining shows, man. And the sixty-three kilogram division in kickboxing is one of the most stacked divisions yeah. ever. You got Hiroya, Yamato, Masaki Norii, fucking Koya Rabi, Kazuma Saiga, Yuta Kubo. You got so many guys. So many, so names. many guys. Yep. So if yep. you don't watch kickboxing, you need to fucking slap yourself and really go. Just slap some sense in yourself, sense into yourself, and go watch it, man. Really, but uh, I agree. Nori's Both such agree. a G. Nori's just such a G, uh, and that's really all about that fight. Anything else that's you want to talk about? Any other fights you want to talk about before we go into Fedor? Um, Nagashima. We'll talk about Nagashima. Nagashima Kikuno, man, that shit was crazy. First round, bro, oh they, my went, God. they went toe to toe. I'm top surprised. Top of the year. Props to Kikuno top for going. Oh man. Bro, props to Kakuno for going at him. This. For going at him for the first round. No, I not, thought he was I, nuts. I, I, I'm not I'm not giving Kakuno really props, really. Kakuno said, oh, Shinyoki was scared to stand with K1 champion in exchange, but I'll stand with, with Yuichiro Nagashima in exchange. He did with for the first round, did for most of the second round, but I think he got shook after he got dropped in the first round. And in the second round, he wanted to take him down and fucking ground and pound him. And I got no respect for that. Because you said you want to fucking stand with him and finish him standing. I got no respect for that, Kikuno. I think, I think, once, I Kikuno got, got, I think once Kikuno got clipped in the, in the end of the first, he said, fuck it, I'm just going to, you know, do, do it my way. Yeah, just, and he got just, the win. And but Nagashima is just sitting there with no defense, just just getting I know, fucking crazy. nailed. Like, but the first, I, the first round like, of that stop, fight. Stop, stop. That, that was the classic. best first round. In all, all 2011, hands down. So epic. So yeah. epic. Absolutely. Uh, then we got to definitely talk about the Kawajiri fight. It's his second win at uh, 145 and against a, a great fighter in Kazuki, uh, Kazuki Miyata. You know what I'm saying? Fucking just destroyed him. It was arm At his own game. At his own game. He wrestled at the his own shit game. out of that motherfucker. And that's, that's what people don't realize, that sometimes Olympic wrestling credentials don't mean shit. When you got a guy like Crusher, there's not there's nothing you can do. He's just gonna Listen, Crusher, Crusher is a veteran. He's an MMA veteran. He fucking knows the game. 
He's just an amazing... Uh, to me, he's one of those underrated MMA fighters of all time, yeah. period. Um, and he just... I mean, Miyata is known as being one of the best wrestlers pound for pound in MMA, period. And fucking Kawajiri yeah. fucking took him down at will, pounded him out, and got the side choke. Unbelievable performance by Kawajiri. And I, I tell you, I really like him at 145, man. I really, really right. do. New life, new crush. He needed that. Uh, he doesn't look yeah, like he's he missed a season. He doesn't even look like he's missed a step no. at that weight. The, the weight cut doesn't seem like it affected him at all, really. He seemed like he, he didn't lose any strength. Which is, which is kind of weird because Kyle Jerry has, yeah. has a big frame. He has a big frame. So I thought he would have a problem. He, yeah, he's a big 155. Yeah. And at 145, he's fucking, he kind of looks a little bit uh, face sucked in, but he's fucking yeah. still huge, man. And War Crusher all day. I'm waiting for the IQ wrestler highlight. He's 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 coming out, and I'm redoing my motherfucker. So don't try and fucking try on me. Uh, we gotta talk about this Megumi Fuji fight. Just destruction. Same thing as always. Armbar. Nothing you can do. It's coming. It's a sure greatest, thing. Greatest greatest It's, it's more sure than a Ronda Rousey armbar. It's more for sure than a Ronda Rousey. Ronda Rousey. It's all about. Mega Magoo will fuck up Ronda Rousey. I don't care about the weight difference Megumi either. Fuji, Satoko Shonashi, all fucking day. The two female goats. And you got to throw Cyborg in there. Well, I, w I guess I would say she's on the cusp of becoming that if she continues on this track. But uh, Mega Megumi Mega Fuji, Fuji, man. You know what? She's kind of cute, man, Megumi Fuji. I she's I so like adorable. Did you see the intro with her and Josh Barnett? When they both came out, uh, Japanese intro style, and they stood next to each other, and they both did like a huh, 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 uh, yeah. like a clap. She's so fucking adorable, and I would love for her to pull guard on me any fucking I would day. I would, I got, like I said, bro, I would toss her salad, no fucking dressing <laughs> either, bro. Any, any fucking time. She's, I, know you're, I know she's 39. You want, like, you want fucking Japanese babies. I will, I will have kids with Megumi Fuji because I know they will be so fucking sick. My girlfriend won't mind. She knows who Megumi Fuji is. She she follows the sport, combat sports. Uh, she loves her. She watched the fight with me. Fuck it. I'm so all fast. about it. Uh, I'm, try, I'm trying to impregnate do. as many chicks as I can right now, so bring her on. Definitely. Trying to, trying to be like, uh, just get it popping, man. Get those warrior kids going. That's it, bro. That's it. Army. That's it. But, uh, you guys want to talk about the Josh Barnett uh, pro wrestling match? Did you guys see that? i tell you one thing about Josh Barnett, and, and you know, I'm not, we're not gonna, I don't want to talk too much about it. One thing about Josh yeah. Barnett, that motherfucker could teach a lot of current pro, wrestle, pro wrestlers how to fucking really yeah, do it, man. He's better than wrestle. most people out there, man. He's amazing to watch. The, yeah, but that's the thing. This is just a, such a huge difference between American wrestling and, and Japanese wrestling. Japanese wrestling actually translates into combat sports and mixed martial arts with arm locks and all that shit. When America is just choke slams and fucking DDTs and sharpshooters and bullshit like that. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Josh Strong Barnett, style, man. bro. Strong style. Yeah, uh, you know, all day. And, and it's like, like the early like rings, like the early rings days. That's, that's yeah. like, you know, it was all just pretty day. much MMA wrestling kind of, you know? Pro yeah. wrestling. Yeah. It was crazy. And that's exactly what he did. That's exactly what this fight with uh, Suzuki it was. It was fucking amazing. And that's really all you need to say about it. The rest and, of the and real quick, I, I, honestly, I know a lot, of, a lot of these fucking MMA dweebs on fucking Twitter uh, complain about these hybrid cards. I fucking love them, man. I love I like, MMA, love kickboxing, them. hybrid pro wrestling. It's, like it's a, fun. It's, it's a it's buffet fun. for I'm, fucking combat sports fans. Exactly. I want to be entertained, bro. I want to be entertained, and I'm entertained. If you don't like it, don't watch it. Definitely. If you don't like it, don't watch it. Simple as that. Exactly. But yeah. anything else? Uh, we gotta talk about Aoki Kidioka. I didn't really get to see mo too much about it. I know Aoki's. I saw the highlights. I know Aoki's really stepping up his game at Evolve Gym. Uh, really Big working time. the Muay Thai. Fucking really just hitting Kikuno with the clinch. Uh, I respect it, dude. Please keep it up. And uh, you're just destroying fools like all those neck cranks and now this. I'm really happy for Shinyoki. Keep it up. Keep that dream belt, and uh, I hope to see you in the UFC. Keep working your stand-up game at Evolve. It's obviously a great place. In well, I, I tell school. you what, one thing about Shinya Yoki, there's really nobody else for him to fight in Japan. And, and, and no, you know, I appreciate exactly. I appreciate what he's trying to do by trying to help the JMMA brand. You know, like I bringing, you know, I, 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 I respect him for that. But for his personal career, 
he's not going to fight anybody else over there. He'd have to really come over to the UFC and fight those guys. And I hate saying that. I really, really do. Cause I'm all about global MMA and expanding it all over the place. But for Shinya Yoki's right now, personal career, he really needs to make the move and fight the elite guys because there's nobody else for him in Japan to fight. He's be- I mean, exactly. Kitayoka was probably the best opponent left for him, and he beat him. Hmm. So there's really nobody else for him to fight, so i like to see Shinya in the UFC in 2012. Yes, definitely. Totally agree with that. Uh, then you got, you got of course, Fedor versus Ishii. That's and, it. Ooh. But what did you think was going to happen? You know what I mean? Fedor hit him with a, with a right straight, left uppercut, right hook, and it was over. Done deal. And he, Fedor, Fedor just looked at him on the ground and just said, you're done. Bro, those, pun- those, so, punches, Happy New Year. those punches look painful. They, they, look, they look painful. Fedor, <laughs> Bro, his... his, his his punches look crisp, man. And she had no chance. I'm sorry to say it, but I, I, I'm not sorry to say it because I fucking hate Satasha, Satoshi Ishii. I hate him. Why, because he, 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 he left Japan? Because he left Japan? Because he left Japan? He's not JMMA. He's not JMMA. He only fight once a year on, on New Year's in Japan. And, you know what I'm saying? Ask for a grip of money. You come train and live in California fucking 12 months or uh, 11 months out of the year. And then go fight every New Year's in Japan. Chase what? Black, Black House, right? That's more money than you're worth. Just because you won some, ju- just because you're you're a good judo guy and you're popular in Japan, I don't respect that. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you lay and pray, Dr- Drama Banner. You lay and pray, Minoa Man. Uh, I don't, I don't respect that. And I'm so happy that Fedor just destroyed him. Uh, I got into a, a, a Twitter conversation with Michael with Shivello. Oh, shout out to Shivello. Nine hours, oh, you know, man. Was, Nine uh, hours, the man. Listen, props to you. He, props he to is, Mike Hogan. Your commentary was amazing. He's a great. He's a great. He's the greatest announcer, co- commentator in MMA. I'm sorry. I don't. Maybe you guys, Without a doubt. Without a doubt. In awe of, me, of his. Yeah, definitely. I'll hear. I know Elon. A couple other people don't like him that much, but I, I love that guy. He's the nicest guy in the world when you meet him. Chabelo, Chabelo's my boy. That's my. That's my boy. I support him 100. percent I think he's the best. I, I love. Hearing him call uh, call an event, I, I personally do. Um, I know Elon don't like him because of uh, the Fedor. He's some happened on Twitter with Fedor. He said something about Fedor. But at the end of the day, you can't crucify somebody for having an opinion. So because they have a different opinion, you know, Elon, you're my boy, bro. I love you. You know what I'm saying? But uh, no homo. But fucking, um, you know, he has his opinion on Fedor. That he, you know, you, you can't hate on the guy for that. It is what it is. You know. Um, what are you gonna do? Dude, exactly. Ca- exactly. Uh, trust me. Yeah, you can't. In case you guys don't know, apparently no. uh, you're talking about the the whole bus thing. Uh, apparently, Fedor uh, re- required uh, told the people that uh, Fedor. Uh, it's uh, you, let's let's be honest. It was his management. It really wasn't really Fedor, but uh, Fedor requested that he be on the bus, and that's it. And so apparently, uh, uh, Chevella was saying that the fighters like Bibiano uh, Fernandez, I believe, who won the the bantamweight, uh, right? He won the bantamweight uh, uh, Grand Prix. He, yeah, yeah, Bibiano. Yeah, yeah, he um, Bibiano. Just yeah, he um, he 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 had to wait ninety minutes. Apparently, everybody had to wait ninety minutes because the bus had to go to wherever, drop Fedor off, and come back. Mind you, it was a 70-passenger bus. Uh, Chevelo's like, well, he's, he's a diva. He called him a diva. So everybody was going off on him. Listen, the man's got his opinion. Uh, it, it, it's messed up. I, 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 believe, I blame it on his management because <laughs> you, you blame a lot of things on his management. But, uh, but it is what I it think, is. I think I don't, believe, I don't believe that because look at what Fedor is wearing. Fedor is rocking a fucking sweater from 20 years ago. I don't think he needs a 70 foot bus to be fucking to, to go to fucking Don Quixote's in Japan. You know what I'm saying? He doesn't need that. Uh, that's, I, I think that's management. I just really hope that they. I'll tell you. I'll tell you one thing. Fuck it. I, if I was Fedor, shit, I want my own fucking. <laughs> fuck the other fighters. Man. I want my own shit to myself, man. Fucking tiny ass little street. Goddamn right. Fuck fucking it, bro. Man. I'm fuck a diva. It. Fuck it. I'll, I'll be a diva. I want my own fucking bus. <laughs> I it. want fucking 20 bottled waters, room temperature. I want fucking five bologna sandwiches with the fucking crust Only cut, uh, cut off the fucking bread. That's it. A thousand That's what I want. I'll red be a... Skittles. <laughs> just red Skittles. <laughs> just fucking brown M&M's. Fuck it. 
<laughs> just the red gummy bears, motherfuckers. All, it's, it's, then you find one green one and you just fucking see. Yeah, you flip out. You just take the whole, the whole pail and just like, you know, the whole. <laughs> 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 oh, shit. Fucking A, man. Oh. That's why and fucking. That's why, that's why God didn't bless me with fucking fighting talent or fucking a lot of money. I'd be the biggest piece of shit walking this fucking earth if I had that kind of money. Are you, are you fighting Malky? Here, are you going to fight Malky? Same. Are you gonna fight Malky? Everybody Malky, wants to know. He talks a lot. Of, he talks a lot of shit. I, I'm wait. I, I'm, I'm waiting for the contract in this bullshit CFA promotion. Fucking two weeks now. I haven't heard shit. Uh, listen. One thing about Malky, I'll, I'll say this: he's not a bad guy. And a lot of people think that me and him hate each other. We don't hate each other. I talk to Malky a lot, and most of it's really more of a competitive type thing than real beef. You know. Um, yeah. You know, we talk almost every. We talk about three times a week on the phone. He's not. He's not a bad guy. He just. He's an asshole. He's a. He's an asshole from Miami. And um, just bust your balls. And yeah, he's a ball buster, and he has. A, he, has yeah. he has an ego, but he's. He's not a bad we guy. Like I told like him. That. Yeah, he's. A, he's. A, he's. A, he's not a bad guy. And uh, I haven't received any contract. I'll fight him. I, whatever. Whatever he wants. But like I said, I'm still waiting for uh, for a contract. I haven't got anything, so we'll see what happens. Send but uh, whatever. Sign the contract. Send the contract, bro. I want to see uh, that. Uh, Bob Sapp. Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson. <laughs> Fucking a. <laughs> Fucking a. <laughs> hey, we we went we and, went uh, uh, one more. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. One more fight. We gotta we gotta touch on. We gotta touch on Bibiano Fernandez winning the tournament. Oh, beast. Beast. So fucking beast, man. Beast. Uh, he's training up there in, in, in Vancouver with Matt Hume. They're, they're really they're really bringing him up, man. Uh, he destroyed, when he destroyed Takafumi Otsuka, destroyed uh, fucking Benuelos and uh, decision Rodolfo Marquez. Those are good guys at that weight. And those are guys that the UFC definitely needs to look at. If they want to turn that division into a fucking super, le super legit division, they need to be looking at all these guys. Like uh, Yusef, uh, Rodolfo, uh, Antonio Benuelos, I don't really care for you. I'm surprised that he made it that far, but that's just because he surprisingly didn't get caught in a uh, Mazzucazu Imanari leg lock. You know I want to know, 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 know if fucking Bibiano Fernandez is married with kids, because I don't know what fucking woman in their right mind could get fucking <laughs> wet from seeing that motherfucker's face, because that motherfucker <laughs> is ugly. <laughs> like, like, he looks like, like a little monkey. Than that motherfucker. Oh man, it's he so is true, fucking. Though. He, so he has a face. Not even his mother loves his fucking face. <laughs> uh, that's so fucking true. That's true. Ugly and that's a. That's really the dream card. Huh? It was a great New Year's. Great. It was a event. fun card. Uh, Fedor is coming back. Uh, he'll be the UFC champion soon. Mm -hmm. uh, this is what I said to Michael Chiavello, and uh, I stick by what I said. I told I told Chiavello he's gonna come on. He's gonna start a. A win streak, sign with the UFC, and win that title, and it's gonna happen, Mike. So come at me. We went an hour. How much? We went an hour, <laughs> and it, it <laughs> went by like this, man. It went by like this. Uh, Bloodstain, thank you for coming on. We gotta hang out soon. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, for man. On. Oh hell yeah! Well, I'll be on again. Blogger of the year, right there. Blogger of the year. year. Middle Easy, where the fuck is my trophy? Number one. What I get blogged where's my trophy? Do I get anything? Put it I got in nothing, but I get all I get all I get is like not where's my where, send me something. Send me a trophy. Send me Listen. something. Send me a picture of Kat Von C's tits. Let me see something. Ironforgesiron.com would give you a trophy. Anything. If we did, the, if we did the the, the ear the award, I I have, would do it. We have to start. <laughs> so there it is. Yeah, no, I'll tell you right now. I want to see. I want to see Kat Von C topless. That's what. That's there what I is. want. <laughs> That'll be my award. All right. MiddleEasy.com. Okay. Hook it up. So there it is. Hook it up, MiddleEasy. Get your shit together, man. What do you What do you motherfuckers know about this Kaniki man? Old school muscle What's man up, shit right here, bro. Man. Hell yeah! Man, what do you guys know about that? Day. Listen, I, shout out to IQ Rest. Listen, I got, I got the, uh, the <laughs> I got the boss rooting, man. I got the boss rooting. Not everybody. Oh has... shit! Yeah, you seen that? You won that? Yeah. Oh, Everybody, everybody's oh, getting. Shit. Everybody's coming out with the, oh, all the stuff they won, but yeah, man. Yo, I see fucking, I, I see Chuck has, he's fucking glowing right now. He must have got some pussy this weekend, <laughs> man. You're glowing, fucking bro. Dude, my Nautico <laughs> came from Saitama, and we fucking, you know what I'm saying? You got a little, you got a little extra pep in your step. 
Hell yeah, threw me up in a triangle at the Cosmo. We got it going down. Damn. Slapping the bass. You know what I'm saying? I, I got to go fuck uh, in the bank my broad right now, fellas. So listen, so, listen. Definitely. Salute. Uh, the general, the godfather of this whole MMA vlogging thing. We all, every single vlogger in the world, when it comes to MMA, owes this man a gratitude and thanks. Because he's the one that started it all, man. Definitely. We all do this vlogging stuff. And, and you know, I, 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 give, I give props to people. Here comes my whole ass-kissing uh, uh, speech. But your brother was the one who actually was the first person to mention doing vlogging. So it's it's you two guys, your, your Fahrenheit yourself are the two guys that uh, are the ones that said, hey, you you should do stuff for Team Takeover. You should do stuff. And here I am. I got a part of a website, man. I got a couple of interviews. Keep it up, bro. I, 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 I tell you right now, I told you a while ago, specifically you and Chuck have good chemistry. I watch all your videos. You guys keep it up. You guys are a good team. Yes. And you keep doing your thing, man. Yes. And, uh. As for fucking Fahrenheit, that motherfucker is not Fahrenheit. No, I don't know where the, he's a fucking hipster now. He fucking he's a, he's a vegan. He's a vegan for one. He wears fucking scarves every day. I don't know what the fuck's the matter with that kid. So, so he's all hanging out with Bowser right now. We gotta give him a new name. He ain't Fahrenheit no more. No, is, not anymore. Nonetheless, not anymore. that's it. I, IronForgesIron.com. <laughs> you know, uh, uh, the Team Takeover forums. You have our Twitter names on top. All you gotta do is add a at at the Bloodstain Lane thing, combine his name together. That's well, you're it. You're already following you, Bloodstain if Lane. You follow yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah, you probably follow. Uh, <laughs> thank you for coming on. We'll do this again. Maybe for the Nick Diaz fight yeah. next month, hopefully. The Nick Diaz fight. Let's do it. All right. Nick Diaz fight. So there you go. He's, he's confirming okay. himself. Uh, shout outs to Michael Myers and everybody else. <laughs> Michael Myers. <all> right. <laughs> <laughs> there it is, man. Uh, thank you guys for watching. It's an hour, but nonetheless, I'm sure it's entertaining as hell. Because uh, anything Blessing Lane does, fuck your life. That's it, people. Peace out.